everyone, and welcome to the Arthritis Action Podcast. My name is Mark. I'm the area coordinator for the charity and also your host today. Uh, joining me on this episode is our services development manager, Sarah Gudgeon. How are you, Sarah? Hello. Yes, I'm, I'm lovely. Thank you. I hope you are too. I'm all good. All good. Thank you. Excellent. Um, so, I okay, guess first things first. So, if you tell us a little bit about you and your role with the charity. Okay, so um, I am one of the service development managers at Arthritis Action, um, and my main focus is developing new and exciting opportunities for the charity. Um, it involves a lot of external networking, or as I like to call it, schmoozing, um, <laughs> with other charities, organisations um, that are involved, well, not only with people with arthritis, but with other long term conditions as well. Um, and particularly, I do network um, heavily with NHS services, um, such as the improving access to psychological therapy teams. Um, my main focus, uh, or sorry, primary focus, I should say, is developing ways in which um, arthritis action can become more um, involved in helping you know the emotional and mental well-being of people living with with arthritis that is my primary focus I also help to maintain um I maintain sorry as well as develop many of the existing services as well okay great excellent that's a much more sort of like concise and long version than I would give about my one right? <laughs> <laughs> I develop stuff that's what I do yeah, I develop great. stuff <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so like today's topic is emotional well-being. So, I mean, obviously, that's one of the most important things we should be addressing when it comes to managing your arthritis. And so we should probably, I guess, start off by explaining a little bit more about what we mean by that. So I'm going to pass this one to you because you're going to make this a lot clearer than I'd be able to. So, so I hope so. <laughs> what, what do we mean when we say emotional well-being? When we when we talk about emotional health, and emotional well-being, we are basically kind of referring to our thoughts and our feelings and how um how, how we're you know feeling on a particular day or you know how a situation is making us feel so you know um arthritis in particular the um main kind of emotions that surround arthritis are you know low mood sometimes anxiety is is um, very prevalent with people who live with arthritis and this can sometimes lead to depression um you know and there is a scale for depression as well so there's like you know mild to moderate depression and it can can obviously increase depending depending on how someone feels um and you know looking after our mental and emotional health as you've just said is just as important as looking after our physical health um they work very much together hand in hand um and especially when you live with a long-term condition like arthritis as well i always say to people you know the clue really is in the name you know long term it's not going away which um means it's inevitable that someone's emotions um, and how they feel is you know is going to be impacted by their arthritis over time living with arthritis for however long will impact someone's emotional health inevitably at some point um, and so it's just really important to be aware of your emotions and aware that you know you're going to have good days and bad days and you know it is something that you're going to have to try or I shouldn't have to say go and have to try but try and become more familiar with I think whilst you're on your journey of living with arthritis so understanding how we feel is important um it can be very difficult at times um especially if people are in pain as well um it's very you know it's very difficult to talk about your emotions um but connecting with your emotions is it is important and understanding how how living with arthritis makes you feel that's something I was, uh, yeah, something I picked out there was when you said about like noticing it and like how mm. I think one sort of big issue that has always been is people aren't very open to talking about these things. They're not open to even addressing the sort of mental health or emotional well being at all, which is something that feels like it's starting to change now. Like people are mm. starting to make a, it seems to be a bit more prevalent in the mainstream, I suppose, might be a way of putting it. But yeah, I think, um, you know, I think from my experience um, with working with the charity and obviously my job changing to, um, you know, obviously expanding our services to mental health. When I speak to people on the phone, and that is actually one of my other things that I do at the charity, I answer the phone calls that come in, a lot of them, um, and people from different ages. And I do find that people who are who are younger and have been diagnosed with arthritis are more open and aware with talking about how they feel and their emotions mm. and their emotional health. Um, and obviously arthritis can affect anyone from any age, um, but obviously a lot of our membership group um, age group is kind of older maybe retirement age upwards and sometimes it's 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 a generational thing so those those people who have got arthritis living with arthritis aren't as open 
to talking about their emotions and it is you know like you say it's getting better it's it's not as bad as it was um but there is improvements to be made and it's about starting that conversation so sometimes just starting that conversation with somebody on the phone you know they can suddenly be aware of oh actually yeah maybe I should talk about it a bit more you know just sharing how you feel with a partner or a friend or a health professional or you know somebody you feel comfortable with can be a really good release for people you know somebody else understanding how you feel or trying to understand Mm. how you feel yeah I've definitely found that a lot with solo with people I've spoken to as well as some don't even necessarily know like how much almost like how much work they actually have to do or how much there is sort of under it all because they've just kind of ignored it as much as possible but when it starts to come out it can be incredibly sort of like you know therapeutic almost to do so and emotional actually as soon Mm. as you know it's um suppressing your your thoughts and your feelings can be I suppose okay for a while but actually it'll build up you know like a volcano and all of a sudden it you know that volcano will erupt and all of your emotions will come out you know and 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 that can be very overwhelming. Whereas if you start from the beginning of your journey to try and talk about it a little bit, whatever you feel comfortable with, really, um, just so that it's not all building up inside, you know, suppressing your emotions is, I don't know if quite the right word is dangerous, but it can be worse in the long run, Mm. I think. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, I mean, from your sort of experience with like, you know, chatting to all the members and various other people, like, what kind of impact does arthritis have on people's mental health and emotional well-being? Um, it it definitely varies from person to person, um, depending on you know what type of arthritis they've got and where it is in the body. Everybody's unique. Everybody's different, um, and the way people deal with pain is different as well, and that can really impact you know how people are feeling as well. Um, it's important to remember actually that you know a lot of people that I do talk to may not just have arthritis they may be living with more than one long-term condition um and that is really important to understand as well because you know just living with arthritis is one thing but actually if you're living with if you are somebody who's got arthritis or you know maybe two different types of arthritis also has diabetes or another long-term condition their emotional health will be harder to manage than somebody who's, who's just got arthritis so there are a lot of um elements to you know, managing your mental health and understanding your conditions and how they make you feel. Um, Like I said, everyone's health situation is different and therefore, you know, one size doesn't fit all. Um, But I think, you know, we were just talking about this a moment ago. I think as a nation generally, you know, the sayings such as, you know, keep calm and carry on or, you know, don't air your dirty laundry or, you know, stiff up a lip, you know, that's, you know, that's my grandmother's, you know, famous saying, stiff up a lip, you'll get through it, you know, and it's, it's that, those type of sayings that I think, oh gosh, you know what, we're kind of taught, we're, we're taught as, you know, young people not to actually talk about our emotions and how we feel. So as you take that through your life, um, you know, we've said it's better, you know, now, but, you know, especially when I was young, oh, you don't talk about those things, you know. Yeah, same here, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, it does impact someone's mental health, definitely. And even if it doesn't initially at the start of your journey, it will over time. So if you've been living with arthritis for 30 years and you haven't really kind of, you know, engaged with your emotions, there's going to be a tipping point at some at some point along that journey. And it's just it's about managing it all the way through and making sure that you're aware of how you feel. Definitely. So I mean, what do you think some of the like the most common issues you have? Like as you said, like, it, it is it is obviously a very individual thing. And as we've sort of said sort of lots of times about arthritis, like the one size fits all does not apply to it because it can affect everyone so differently, as you said, with um like the mental side of things. So I mean, what, what would you say, let's say the, some of the most common issues that people have, just to kind of give some broad things yeah. out there that people might be able to sort of like identify with? I think for me personally, again, for the length of time I've worked for the charity and the type of people I've spoken to, depending on where you are on your journey as well, I think with arthritis, um, the biggest overall theme for me is acceptance. It's acceptance of I've been diagnosed with arthritis, you know, and bearing in mind, you know, sometimes a diagnosis of a diagnosis sorry, of arthritis can take quite a few years, depending on 
the type of arthritis you've got. You know, there are over 200 different types, which actually was a very fascinating fact for me when I started Absolutely, working yes, for so, the yeah. charity. Yeah. So, you know, it's not just rheumatoid and osteoarthritis. There are, you know, offshoots of that. And there's, you know, over 200 different types. Um, but once you get that diagnosis, it kind of goes one of two ways, in my opinion. Um, number one is, oh, great, I've got a diagnosis. I know what it is. I'm going to plan ahead and I'm going to move forward and, you know, I, you know, it's this happiness of, oh, but, you know, it is something, it's not just pain, it's it's something, it's got a label. And some people feel relieved and happy about that, but some people also think, gosh, no, it can't be that, or no, I don't want, I don't want to accept it. It's not something that I want to live with. And you then become, there's then this fight and flight mode, basically. You start fighting the arthritis, so you battle through and, you know, again, stiff up a lip, all of those times, they battle through, it's not happening to me, I'm going to do three hours of gardening and exhaust myself, but it will be fine, and actually, it's a boom and bust cycle, physically and emotionally, it's a boom and bust cycle, um, and I think that's, for me, is the, over, the, the overall theme, for me, is acceptance, and accepting that you've got arthritis, it's not going away, but that doesn't mean it's the end, it just means it's a different journey it's just just a different life journey and that's you know what we do at the charity we help people to have a good life with arthritis and we can help people on that journey emotionally and physically i, th- I definitely think that's true i mean one one sort of like thing is that it can be an opportunity it's a really odd way of putting it because thinking of arthritis as an opportunity but it's more like your outlook on things and how you then sort of choose to approach it like you might not be able to do something you used to be able to do that was like one of your favorite things perhaps Mm. but instead maybe you then are forced to try something else and you find out that actually you now really love that thing and you may never have discovered this thing unless you tried it because yeah it can open the world up to new passions and new interests and new learnings and different things it's all about the approach you take to these things it's the mental approach that you take Mm. to it as well so yes there's a period of i always another good kind of um theme is like a period of mourning which again sounds very very sad but it is so you kind of mourn the life you once had and you mourn the life that you hoped you were going to have you know, maybe in retirement or or whatever, wherever you are in your life. But it's also after the morning has passed, it's then the acceptance. And then after the acceptance is it's going to be fine. It's going to be different, but it is going to be fine. And I am still going to be happy and I am still going to have a good life. Um, but that is, you know, that's quite a journey, isn't it, really? And, it, you know, it doesn't happen overnight either. It's not one day I'm mourning, next day I'm, I'm accepting and the third day, you know, I'm no, all happy not, and yeah. everything's going to go great. <laughs> it does take time. And I think and that's another thing is arthritis and your emotions take time too to kind of understand where you are in your journey. And also there's no set time for anyone to do this as well. So like, again, everything's individual, everything's, everyone's different. So mm. what some people may bounce back real quick from it, like they manage to just accept it, like, right, great, I'm carrying on. But for another person, it may take a really, really long time. So mm. Just hopefully anyone who's all like listening, mate, don't punish yourself for like if no. you're struggling, if you're struggling <laughs> to deal with it, like to accept it even. Mm. It might take you a really long time to do so. And there's no rush to get there. But you know. there is no rush. And everybody, you know, we we do, you know, everyone is unique. And we say that all the time at Arthritis Action. Everyone's unique, everyone's different, and everyone will get there eventually. It's just, it is that journey. And we do call it a journey. It might be a week for one person might be two years for another and again it's being okay with that it's being emotionally and mentally okay with that journey however long your journey is it's not a race you know it's not a race it's you know at your own pace all the time so what role do you think that communication has when it comes to people's emotions it's so important i mean we've just been talking about you know how important it is to um connect with your emotions and understand how you feel and be okay with it um but it's also and that's obviously internally but if you you know you then need to try and communicate that with other people whether that's you know a friend a family member a health professional a colleague um you know it's important to have those conversations so that people even if they don't fully understand you know how you're feeling and what you're going through at least they are aware of it so um they can make adjustments you know if if necessary you know especially at work or something you know if you're not having a good day or you know at least your colleagues or your manager will understand how you're feeling that day you know if, you, if you're not feeling on top form for example 
Um, so it is very, very important. You know, um, it can, like we said before, it's, it can be difficult and challenging. Um, you know, in, internalizing your emotions is um, okay for a period of time, but there has to be an outlet somewhere as well. And even, you know, even if it's not, you know, if you don't have those close circles, maybe um, around you, it might be worth finding other ways to talk about arthritis or your emotions. And that can be through, you know, groups and social events. You know, we've got arthritis action online groups, haven't we, Mark? And, we and, do. and see, you know, that's a really lovely outlet. We've got an AA connect, you know, sorry, an arthritis action connect service, uh, which is a telephone service. You know, that's another way of um, people connecting. So it doesn't have to be somebody who's particularly close to you. It could be a volunteer, you know, who works for us. Sometimes that's easier, I find, for people. Yeah. Like if it's someone you don't know, that can be easier because you don't you can unload with with no judgment at all because you almost don't care what that person thinks, and that yeah. can, that can be really beneficial. Like talking to people you have, you don't know them; they don't know anything about you, and you yeah. can choose to share as much as you want. And the, when it's sort of a situation like that, there's no judgment either because they're there for that. So exactly and it. you know if it's on the telephone you might not ever meet this person this person might be in scotland and you're in cornwall you know so there mm. might not ever be an opportunity to meet in person it's also that yeah like you say there's no judgment um and, you know, and sometimes maybe our we we might feel that our friends and families you know close people to us may we may find you know the person living with arthritis may feel oh i'm going to be judged or they won't invite me again to something or you know something like that and you know, and I th I understand where that can come from. So if you just try and talk about it with somebody you you don't know or you, you're not ever going to see, then I think maybe more people are more comfortable in communicating in those settings. Mm. Yeah. So in that as well, you mentioned uh, one thing that's really important was um, good days and bad days. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, obviously a lot a lot, a lot to a lot to unpack in in that area of yeah. things. But, but I mean, like. What can people do to kind of help themselves through those days, do you think? Because obviously when you're on top of the world, everything's wonderful and that's all great. But as with everyone, especially if you have arthritis, you can have those days when it when you flare up when you, or even when you're just struggling to cope with dealing with it. Mm, I mean, good days and bad days is one of those things that, you know, people with arthritis, you know, need to live with is it it's accepting again that you are going to have good days and accepting that you're going to have bad days as well and you're going to have days that are in between both you know not necessarily great not necessarily bad but somewhere in between and again I suppose it's really important to point out that you know it's not just people with arthritis this could be somebody who's living with more than one long-term condition so mm -hmm. again you know that's really important to remember um but I, it was described to me once and I do use this a lot this this description so um somebody once described it to me living with arthritis was it's like having a backpack every day you you wake up in this backpack you don't know what's going to be in it it's like a surprise every day um one day it can be full of stones you know and just really heavy the whole day is going to be a struggle it's going to be a bad day you know and it's kind of getting up and going okay today isn't the day that i'm going to get everything done or you know my plans aren't going to go to plan um and the next day it could be full of feathers and it's a great day and, you know, I'm going to get everything done. Obviously, not too much. We don't want the boom and bust cycle happening. But, you know, you're going to feel like you're achieving a lot more or, you know, you're going to go out for coffee with your friend. And, you know, that day is going to be a good day. Other days you'll wake up and there'll be stones, a bit of gravel, maybe a few, a few feathers. You know, you just don't know what's going to be in there. And I think, again, it's the acceptance of I don't know what the day is going to be like, but kind of being OK with that being okay that you're not quite sure how it's going to go. Um, but I think it's a really lovely way of describing, you know, the ups and the downs of arthritis, the good days, the bad days, and just not knowing how the day is going to turn out. I really like that analogy. That's brilliant. I know. So I think I heard it on, <laughs> I'm sure I heard it on a webinar from a, a lady, you know, a patient by experience. I thought, oh gosh, that's wonderful. I'm going to use that all the time. That's great. I'm damn stealing that one as well. That's great. <laughs> Don't steal it for your presentation, Mark. <laughs> thank, thank you to that, to you and that webinar lady. I, I'm definitely yeah. using that one. Um, I think another th thing to mention on that as well is that when you have like those bad days that, you know, sometimes it's okay to just take a day off. Some Fine. people have, there's a really sort of common thing. People always have like the constant need to do things and need to achieve something every day. And like, you're like, oh no, I can't just, I can't just have a day off and like not do anything. But sometimes that's the best thing for you that you can do is just yeah. almost just like revel in it. And just, if you're, if you're going to be unable mm. to, like say it's one of those days when it's full of stuff, your backpack's full of stones. Yeah. Then, um, 
maybe just like a day on the sofa with a bar of chocolate and a film is what you need. And that's, you know, just snuggle under a blanket and just yeah. kind of forget about the world for a day. And yeah, that's if, exactly it. And that means you can feel good the next day, then you can get on with your stuff then. But by constantly battering yourself physically and mm. mentally, again, it's just going to, you're never going to sort of get that good day. Well, the, you, you'll get it again, obviously, but you're not yeah. going to get it straight away again. You're going to have more bad days than good days, you know, and if there's yeah. a boom and bust cycle, which, you know, um, I don't know if you've talked about this, Mark, but, you know, if, if you go hell for leather one day because you're feeling great, your backpack's full of feathers and you're feeling great, you're going to do everything, all the gardening, all the housework, you're going to cook a cake and, you know, and then you're done for three weeks afterwards because you've done too <laughs> much in one day, you know. So it's about, you know, emotionally and mentally as well as physically feeling okay with a bad day or a good day and going do you know what I can make a cake tomorrow or you know I'll do the gardening in a couple of days it's fine I mean the outlook on things like that is just so important you can notice you can actually notice quite a a big physical change in people when they're out depending on how their outlooks are because if you start Mm -hmm. I mean, as you mentioned earlier on, there's sort of the link between the physical and the mental side of it. Like if you if you are feeling down, then your your physical reaction to it, like you know, your posture starts to mm-hmm. slump, you just you you're low in energy, you don't move as well as you used to. Whereas if you have like a good outlook on things, even if you're just like trying to have a good outlook, it can still make a positive impact on your body. Yeah, so I'm not yeah. saying it's gonna I'm not saying it's gonna cure your arthritis and you're gonna be everything's gonna be wonderful from then on, but you'll be able to certainly do more and achieve more if you have that. More of a positive thinking outlook, I think, as well. And, you know, it doesn't have, like you say, it doesn't have to be the brightest of sunshines, you know, of a positive outlook. But as long as your glass is half full rather than half empty, (laughs) um, you know, that's a really good way of starting, you know, just thinking a little bit more positively. Mm. A good um, example of some of the stuff, like against some of the points we both made now, Mm -hmm. that um, a colleague of ours told me about, it was um, like having like a a list of things you can do, but having some of the things on that list being incredibly basic, like Mm -hmm. get dressed, clean yourself, go outside. And that can literally mean you go on your front step, turn back around and go inside. (laughs) Yeah. Even yeah. it doesn't, not everything you achieve has to be this massive lofty goal. Like I didn't have to clean out the entire attic or something no. like that. <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever the job is, yeah. you know, it can just be literally, I tick something off my list today. That's good enough. And that is good enough. That yeah. really is good enough. And it's about being okay with that, accepting that, being okay with it and going, it's fine. Yep. Yeah. I've ticked a few things off my list and I feel good today. Another sort of, good bit of advice I heard is like when if you're starting to think sort of like really negatively about yourself Mm -hmm. and you start to like really sort of like drag yourself down and you know calling yourself names inside your own head and everything Mm -hmm. or like you know because quite often people will start to think you know I'm useless I'm I'm rubbish I'm all that kind of stuff think about what advice you would give to a friend and like would you ever say that to a person like oh you're useless you're worth what so try and like reflect the advice you would give to someone else onto you and you'll find that it'll probably be a bit lot kinder because if you were trying to bring someone <laughs> else up, you'd probably say like, no, don't be stupid. You've got all this and you can do this and you're all right. And like, you're a wonderful person. Like, you know, we love you and all this stuff. But then maybe try and reflect that same advice back at yourself. Definitely, definitely. I mean, you would, you know, if you're a lovely person and I'm a kind person, like you would never say those things to to people. But sometimes it's um, you give yourself such a hard time and you're kind of labeling yourself as I am, you know, I'm giving myself the label of being useless. I'm giving myself the label of, you know, um, not being helpful to anybody or, you know, and that's, you know, a very um, downward spiral, I mm-hmm. think is is what I would say. And, you know, the most important thing is to make sure you don't go too far down that spiral. And if, if you do feel like you're going really far down um, and you can't get back up, um, it's it's really important to seek help and advice from from professionals. Um, and I did mention them very early on that I communicate a lot with um, IAP services. Um, they're part of the NHS, so they're called Improving Access to Psychological Therapies, and they're actually attached to most NA- almost every NHS trust around um, the UK. And you can self refer to them online. You can um, your GP can refer you, um, and you can do lots of research. You know finding your local one so for example you could simply put in Bedfordshire IAP service or Bedfordshire mental health and they will it will come up so every county has one and that's really important too if you are feeling low and 
you're feeling even more low and even more low every day, then it's really important to try and seek some help so, so, so that you don't, you don't go too far down that spiral, basically. Absolutely. If you could give one piece of advice to someone living with arthritis about their mental health, what would it be? We just said it. Be kind to yourself. Be very kind to yourself. Don't beat yourself up. And, you know, the amount of people that I talk to on the phone and I think, oh, my goodness, you know, give yourself a break. You know, just be nice to yourself. And, you know, also, like, you're not alone. You are not the only person with arthritis. Um, It does affect people differently, as we as we've discussed. Um, You know, one in six people in the UK live with arthritis. I can't remember how many thousands of people that is. I do have the number somewhere, but (laughs) it's a lot of people, basically. Um, And there is help out there. And I think that's what's important too. you know, not just arthritis action. There are other services and organisations that can help people too, and charitable organisations. You've got to find what kind of works for you and the support that you feel would be most useful to you. But be kind to yourself, you know. And, and that's what I would say, you know, it's something you're living with for a long time. Um, be kind to yourself. Um, and yeah, also learning to say no, mm, which yeah. a, lot, a lot of people, <laughs> myself included, all can't say no to that. Can't say, but actually, it's OK if you wake up with your backpack full of stones and you can't go into town to meet your friend for a coffee. It's OK to say no. It's OK to say today isn't a good day. And I think, you know, rather than struggle through to to meet your friend and actually possibly not have a good time because you're feeling physically and emotionally drained and unwell just say just rearrange you know and if it's a good friend they will <laughs> yeah i mean it goes back you to know? like um like honesty and communication like as we, as we were talking about yeah. earlier like it's the, i know that a lot of people i've spoken to have a fear of like they get really stressed about going out Mm. because you know what's going to be there when i go out is there going to be somewhere for me to sit is there going to be am i going to be able to do things and people can get really anxious about a lot of this stuff and it's it's really really common and it's from like speaking to like in the groups and so on like it's it's so good when you see people talk to other people and they realize they're not the only ones having that problem because it's really really common and like being stressed about doing things or going anywhere or about how it's how you're going to be when you're out can be worse than the actual experience of going out (laughs) exactly 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 that and it's all like and it comes back to the physical and the mental health emotional health of of it all working together Mm. you know and that's you know they do work hand in hand and it's important to consider them both it's not just physical it's emotional as well and as soon as you bring the two together you and try and understand them both together and working together then I think that's, again, part of someone's journey of living a good life with arthritis. Mm. So what resources do we as Arthritis Action have for people in regard to their well, emotional well-being? I don't want to burst our own bubble, but we do have a lot. So one of the things on our website is we have something called a mental health directory and it is something that i created so i'm very proud of it you should um, be and- proud of it like, I can't, I can't. it was a long task for you to put that together oh my goodness it felt like forever but it's so worth it in the end it's so worth it so Absolutely. basically the mental health directory is divided into counties across the country and each county has the relevant um services charitable organizations um nhs services that can help you emotionally So as I mentioned earlier, the improving access to psychological teams, a lot of them are on there. Not all of them. It's a work in progress. Um, But um, yeah, a lot of them are on there. And like I said earlier, you can refer to them self-referral via the internet, via their web pages. Um, I think you can telephone them as well. There's email addresses and your GP can refer you as well. So um, it's totally free as well. So that's really useful to know if you feel like you need you might need some support um there's also you know mind services uh, mind is a very um is a very large charity and they've got yeah. lots of mind hubs across the uk they all do something slightly different you know they're very um i can't think what the word is they're um individualized uh, and they're all like running yeah. their own little way and people have their own things they like to focus on as exactly well. so depending exactly. on the needs of the area as well especially exactly exactly so um there are mind hubs across the uk as well um and that most of them are listed as well um and like i said there's lots of other like kind of um peer groups and um social groups and things that are on there so do take a look at that um it does vary across the country as well um but yeah do take a look at that if you want to if you if you're feeling like you need a bit more support 
Um, we also have webinars as well. Um, there are a few webinars um, that um, specifically focus on mental health and emotional well-being. Um, and we've also got another section called the self-management resource. It's basically um, lots of videos and mini films, mostly our starring our staff, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um and they cover things like they, they split into physical and mental health um, and they do cover things such as planning, um, you know, dealing with emotions, distraction techniques, positive thinking um, and things like that. So, again, they're really useful, really useful to um, to look at as well if you wanted to. And for those of you who want to look that up, the website address is www.arthritisaction.org.uk. And if you have any questions about the podcast or anything you'd like to be coming up any suggestions tips reviews anything you'd like us to know you can send us an email and uh, you can send that to podcast at arthritisaction.org.uk so thank you very much for your time sarah it's been really good talking to you oh thank you so much it's been great thank you so much excellent great thanks everybody bye